Geppetto was an old carpenter who made wooden puppets. One day, he made a new puppet and named him Pinocchio. He had almost finished making the puppet when its legs started to move. Pinocchio jumped off the table and ran out into the street. Late that evening, Pinocchio returned home because he was hungry. The next day, Geppetto made Pinocchio some clothes for school. Then Pinocchio said, Now all I need is an ABC book. To buy the book, Geppetto sold his only coat. With his new book in his hand, Pinocchio hurried off to school. On his way to school, Pinocchio heard strange music and followed it. He arrived at the Great Puppet Theater. Pinocchio sold his new book to buy a ticket to see the show. He was excited as he watched the show. Suddenly, the music stopped, and the puppets on stage called out his name. Pinocchio, come up on stage, the puppets said. While he was climbing up on stage, the crowd grew angry at the interruption. Just then, the director came out from the side of the stage to see what was happening. He grabbed Pinocchio by the neck. Come with me, he said in an angry voice. He asked Pinocchio many questions. He had decided to use Pinocchio as a piece of wood for his fire. But Pinocchio told him about his poor father. The director felt sorry for Pinocchio. He gave Pinocchio five gold coins and told him to go home. On his way home, Pinocchio met a fox and a cat. They told Pinocchio that he could double his five gold coins in the fields outside the city of Simple Simons. Pinocchio followed them and they stayed at an inn that night. Meanwhile, Geppetto became worried about Pinocchio and started searching for him. Pinocchio woke up and realized that his new friends had left the inn. He continued to travel toward the city of Simple Simons. Pinocchio heard a strange sound in the bushes behind him. He turned to look and two robbers in black jumped out. Your money or your life, a deep voice said. Pinocchio had put his gold coins in his mouth, so he could not say a word. We will hurt your father if you don't give us your gold coins, they said. No, cried Pinocchio. The gold coins tinkled in his mouth. Now the robbers knew where the gold coins were. They tried to pull open Pinocchio's mouth, but he was too strong. He escaped from them and ran into the forest. The robbers chased after Pinocchio. They caught him and hung him from a tall tree. However, they got tired of waiting for the money to drop from his mouth and left. The next day, a lady looked out of her cottage window. She saw Pinocchio hanging from the tree and clapped her hands three times. A large bird flew down to the cottage. The lady was actually a fairy and she had magical powers. She ordered the bird to cut the rope and bring Pinocchio to her. Pinocchio told the fairy about the robbers and his gold coins. Where are the gold coins now? the fairy asked. I lost them, answered Pinocchio, but he was telling a lie. The gold coins were still in his pocket. As he spoke, his nose grew longer. He told more lies, and with each lie, his nose grew longer and longer.
It grew so long that he couldn't turn around in the room. The fairy helped Pinocchio's nose return to its original size. The fairy told Pinocchio that she had sent for his father. Pinocchio decided to go and meet Geppetto. He came across his two friends, the fox and the cat. He didn't know that they were the robbers who had tried to take his gold coins. Pinocchio forgot about his father and followed his friends. After several months of adventures, Pinocchio lost his gold coins. He went back to the cottage to find the fairy. The fairy was no longer there. He burst into tears. A pigeon flying in the sky heard him crying. The pigeon told Pinocchio that his father was at the shore. Your father's building a boat, the pigeon said. Pinocchio sat on the back of the pigeon and flew to the shore. When he arrived at the shore, he saw a small boat with Geppetto in it. A huge wave made the boat disappear. Immediately, Pinocchio dove into the water. I'll save him! I'll save my father! he cried. Pinocchio swam hard, but he couldn't find his father. Pinocchio saw an island in the middle of the sea. As he swam toward it, he was swallowed by a huge shark. It was dark inside the shark, and Pinocchio burst into tears. Help! he cried. Where am I? Pinocchio saw a faint light in the distance. As he got closer, he saw a candle and a little old man sitting at a table. Pinocchio was surprised. Oh, father, I have found you at last. Geppetto could not believe it was Pinocchio. They talked about their travels and adventures. Geppetto explained that they were in the stomach of a giant shark. Geppetto took Pinocchio by the hand and said, While this candle can still give us light, let's explore inside this shark and see what we can find. They were in the stomach of the huge shark for many months. A lot of different kinds of food and drink had also been swallowed by the shark, so they were able to survive. Pinocchio looked at his wooden body. He remembered that the fairy had promised to make him a real boy if he was good. He still wanted to become a real boy. Every day he took care of his father. One day, when the shark was sleeping, Pinocchio said, Let's escape! The shark is asleep and the sea is calm. They crossed the shark's tongue and jumped over its teeth. Geppetto held on to Pinocchio's neck as he swam away from the shark. Many days passed before they finally reached an island. They started to walk along the shore but were exhausted and fell down. Soon they were both asleep. As Pinocchio slept, he dreamed about the fairy. In Pinocchio's dream, the fairy kissed him and said, As a reward for being good, I will keep my promise. Pinocchio woke up and opened his eyes wide. When he looked at his body, he saw that he was no longer a wooden puppet. He had become a real boy at last.